Hi guys, today I have my seasonal empties. So if you have noticed, I haven't posted any empty videos for three months now. So my last empty video was actually the end of March. And since then I've been just keeping my empties and I decided to do them seasonally rather than monthly. Mainly because I feel not many of you are so interested to watch my empties. It might be like a misunderstanding, but I just feel it's getting a little bit boring. But also at the same time, I feel if I can keep my empties for a little longer, then I can show you, like for example, every month I can finish one shampoo, right? I can reference it to you like, oh, I like my shampoo that I finished two months ago better but you wouldn't really know what it is unless you go back to that video. But this way, if I keep my empties a little bit longer, I can actually show you like four different shampoos and which one I like the best. I think it has a little bit more reference point and it's just a little bit more helpful. But of course, this is all what I think. I don't know what you will feel about it. So please let me know down below if you prefer me to do longer empty videos like this or not. If you would prefer me to go back to the monthly empties, of course I can do that. That's not a problem. But because it's been three months, so I certainly have a lot more products than what I usually would do in my monthly empties. So I'm gonna divide this into two parts. This part, I'm only gonna do my makeup and nail polish and skincare empties. And in my next part, I'm gonna do my body care, hair care, and everything else. So let's just jump in because we do have quite a few to show. Um, I actually have five nail polishes that I finished in the last three months. So that's kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> if you watch my project polish, you've already heard a lot about those. I have a really, really small sample size Kat Von D and Formula X collaboration polish. It's good formula, it's a rosy pink color, nothing special, but I honestly don't feel it's the best polish for this season, but it's so small so I use it up. I have a Julie G color. This one is in the color Dancing in the Dark. It's a very pretty, vibrant, um, deep purple shade. It's a little bit too dark to be used in the summer, so I really try to finish it before summer really comes around. It stains your nails a little bit, so you do have to be careful, use some base coats and whatnot, but it's easy formula, it's good color. I have this nudie pink color from Zoya. I finished this pretty early. It's in the color Brittany. It's a satin finish. I really like this shade, finish, formula, everything about it. I think I might go buy a full size eventually. And then I have a glitter polish from Ginger and Lids. It's their skinnies, so it's not really a sample size polish. It's just the bottle shape is different. The color is Happy Wife, Happy Life. It's a lavender-ish silver metallic glitter uh, polish. I like it. It's really special and different, but it takes a little bit effort to take it off. So be careful with that and you probably want to use a peel off base coat for it. And the last polish I was able to finish is from Maybelline. It's a color show vintage leather in the color Ageless Olive. This one is a really cool finish, really like amazing formula and everything, but it changed at the end. Uh, I think it has something to do with a vintage leather finish because no matter how old my polishes are, I've never had something like this happen before. Uh, they just kind of like dried up in a cottage cheese yogurt kind of texture. It's really strange, but I'm glad I finished it. Actually, I did finish a lot of makeup products in the past three months, which is quite surprising, I think. I finished five lip products in a season. I think that's pretty good. That's more than one per month. I'm really happy about that. I only finished one lip balm. This one is from Nivea. It's a kiss of smoothness. I love this lip balm. I have nothing bad to say about it. Well, except that I wouldn't use it right before I put on my makeup uh, or lip makeup, I guess, because it's really creamy. It kind of wouldn't allow your lip color to set. So if I want to use a liquid lipstick, I definitely wouldn't use this underneath. It would make my like lipstick not really set on my lips. It would run out of my lip lines. But I use those kind of at night, so it's really handy. I finished one lipstick from Maybelline. It's Blushing Bud. I started using this, I think, in March. It was the uh, Drop 10 Before Summer Challenge. When I started it, it was pretty much a new lipstick. So it takes me about like three months to finish a whole lipstick. If I'm dedicated to it, it's a long time if you think about it. 
but I'm really happy this one is gone. Not a big fan of the color. I like the formula though, just not the color. And I finished three lip glosses, two of which are full sizes. One is from All May. This is the Liquid Lip Balm, and the color is Lilac Love. This is my most recent finished product. It's in my Disney Princess Project Rolé, and I finished that pretty quick. I'm not a big fan of this formula, so I probably wouldn't repurchase. The color is lovely though. The other one is from MAC. This one is Pro Long Wear Lip Gloss. I didn't take out the stopper. I just didn't bother. This one has a really sticky formula. Not my favorite, but the color is really pretty. Uh, the color name is Infinitely Likeable. I'm going to back to MAC that one. And the last lip gloss I finished was a uh, sample size from Buxom. This one is in the color Jennifer. Love this one. This is probably my favorite uh, lip gloss out of the three. I think I probably would repurchase this formula, even though I do have like 15 or 20 of them in my collection right now. So I'm definitely going to go use them. And this is probably my favorite lip gloss formula of all time. The rest of the makeup products, I'm just going to pull them out randomly. I have a sample size eyeliner from Cargo. This is the Swimmables collection. The color is Pebble Beach. Really like this color. It's a dark brown. And I really like the formula as well. It couldn't sharpen anymore, so this is all I have left. It sets really easily, and it's very easy to use. It's not hard by any means, so I love this. I have a sample size face primer. This one is Murad Invisible Perfecting Shield. Um, I don't think it really does much for me. It's a very silicone-y kind of primer. It doesn't have a color, but I don't think I have a lot of texture or pore issues, so maybe that's why it doesn't really work that well on me. I mean, like, it doesn't bother me, but I just don't really see a difference on my makeup application or long-lasting features or... I, I just don't see the difference. I have a liquid eyeliner from CoverGirl. This is Intensify Me in the color Intense Black. This one has a really weird tip. Can you see? It's kind of like a petal. So it's skinnier on one side and wider on the other side. And I pretty much just used it in the skinny way, so I still, you know, I, I don't think I really took advantage of the petal shape. Um, so it probably created a little bit of annoyance, but it doesn't really bother me. But the thing is, like, it doesn't really click close. This lid is just like, it doesn't really close, it feels like. And this one dried out really quick. I don't know if it has anything to do with this lid, but I feel it really didn't last me too long. Maybe just a month-ish time. So that's really surprising for a liquid eyeliner. I have two brow products. One is this It Cosmetics Brow Power Universal eyebrow pencil. I really wanted to use this up in 2017 and yeah, I finished it. <laughs> it's a little bit thick, like the, the tip on this pencil is a little thick, um, but it's not too hard. Like now I'm using a eyebrow pencil from NARS. That one is just like, it's a very fine tip, but it's so hard. I would rather like prefer a little bit messier of an application. Like this one is much, um, thicker of a tip but a little bit more creamier but not like as a eyeliner kind of creamy i don't know um i like this but i just don't think i would repurchase i have a sample size brow gel from anastasia yes i said it right this time i believe <laughs> this one is a clear brow gel it's a sample size i really like this i bought the full size because how much i liked it but I definitely like the sample size better because this wand is so much smaller compared to the full size. I think the full size wand is just too big for my eyebrows. Like this one fits just right. And the big one, I feel it's like getting out of my brows. I don't know, maybe it's just in my head, but I definitely prefer the sample size so much better. I don't know if you count this as makeup, but <laughs> I use this to shave my eyebrows a little bit. I have a lot of like straight hair coming down this way so I just you know try to use a razor to raise them and also in the middle like right here um I don't know I use it here and there every once in a while and this one gets a little bit dull so it's time for it to go I have three mascara type of product uh, one is actually a mascara primer this is from the brand Grande um, it's just Grande Primer, I think that's what it's called. I got it from a subscription box. I didn't have much hope, but I love it. I love it so much. I don't want it to go. I don't want it to die, but you can see like the color kind of changed already. Uh, it used to be just a white color. It's just too dry now. It flakes off on my uh, lashes, so I had to stop using it. 
but it pretty much makes any mascara work amazing and I just I love it so much I think I really want to go buy the full size even though I don't know how much it is I've used a lot of lash primers before and I was never a big fan of any lash primers. I thought they're just kind of like a gimmicky extra step. The brands want you to spend extra money on. Um, but with this one, I really see a difference. They make my lashes look so much fuller. And also, I have a lot of like smudgy problems. Whatever mascara I use in combination with this, they don't smudge. <laughs> it's just like a miracle. I love this so much. And I have two mascaras. One is this Sample Size Makeup Forever Smoky Extravagant. I just, I, this wand is too big, you know, for my eye. Can you see this? <laughs> so it's a little difficult for me to use, but I like the formula. I just don't like this wand very much. And here I have this CoverGirl Katy Perry Katy Cat Eye Mascara. This one is kind of a disappointment because I always, love almost any kind of covergirl mascaras this one is just it's a disappointment like it's it still has product in it you know but it's been probably like four months i've been using it so it's just time for it to go the bristle on this wand it's kind of like twisted can you see like a, it's a spiral it goes around it um i just don't get the point of it it gets my lashes really clumpy but they don't separate them and you would just have like bald lashes and clumps on other lashes it's like a mess you know um no i i don't like it i finished one face powder this one is a loose powder from bare minerals it's a mineral veil i try to break open the packaging but it doesn't really like i took out one layer here but there's still another layer um that's like all one piece with a base like I don't know how they made it, but it's all empty. I'm glad I finished it. I probably wouldn't buy loose powder anymore. I don't like them. Like they're inconvenient and I don't see why they're better than pressed versions. And I don't know, I, I just don't see the point. So I probably wouldn't buy any more loose powders, but this one was, was good. Like I have nothing against it other than that it's in the loose form. So um, it's okay, I'm glad I finished it. I have a setting spray. This one has been in my collection for so long and I never really use it until I put it in my project and I push myself to finish it. This is L'Oreal Infallible uh, Makeup Extender Setting Spray. I actually really enjoy this. It's a shame that I don't use it more often, but like price-wise, it's definitely cheaper than those Urban Decay ones. Uh, my favorite is still probably Urban Decay All Nighter, but this one is probably as good as the slick I feel it's not I'm not trying to say I don't like it I, I do really enjoy this guy I think I might go back to repurchase this because it is still much cheaper than those Urban Decay ones my last makeup item is this like sample card from Urban Decay um, it's a four pack kind of sample card I think there are three foundations yeah three foundations and one primer uh, the three foundation shades you can see here two of them are just way too dark i i didn't even try like they're still in their packaging i'm just gonna throw them away not gonna use them and even this one is like pretty dark for me if you can tell and the color on this card is completely different than the color like in this packaging so that's quite surprising and the day i had to use it like as soon as i pumped it out like it surprised me so I don't know what's up with that and I know usually my shade is probably like 3.0 like I used to use 3.0 uh, for naked skin but this one like 2.5 is too dark for me now did I really get that much more pale I don't know I like it okay like it covers well but I definitely definitely like the all-nighter foundation from Urban Decay so much better now so I'm sure I wouldn't buy this naked skin anymore as far as the primer, this primer is kind of like thick, but also a little bit slippery. So it's not very silicone-y. Like you can tell there's silicone in it, but also it's it's thick. It almost feels like it's, it's oil, but like as soon as you spread it on your face, like it melts a little bit. If you were to touch butter, you know, it's solid, but like as soon as you touch it, it will go like melt a little bit. That's kind of how it feels. Um, but you can also feel a little bit of silicone like inside of it. And even though it looks a little pink here, I don't think it really has any color, but it does make your face a little bit more shiny. Ooh, almost forgot about this. This is a big guy. <laughs> 
I used a huge non-acetone nail polish remover. This one is Beauty Secrets. I bought it from Sally's Beauty Supply. I'm sure I got a two-pack when I bought it. Um, you know, I feel I liked it when I was using it, but as soon as I finished this one, I started using my Zoya Remove Plus, and I just realized how much better like Zoya Remove Plus is. So eh, I probably wouldn't repurchase, but I do know like um, after you've used it for a little while, like the second half of the bottle isn't as effective as the first half. I don't know why, maybe some of the ingredients evaporated or it just doesn't work as well anymore, but I'm just in love with my Zoya Remove Plus now. So even though this one was pretty good and it's cheap, but I probably would just stick with my Zoya Remove Plus now. All right, let's get into my skincare now. Actually, um, let's start with those masks. Um, I know I'm missing one. I just finished one last night. It's still in my bathroom. I just, I didn't bother to grab it. Anyways, I have four masks. Three of them are this white one. Actually, the fourth one is the same, this white C one in my bathroom. So technically, I finished five in the past three months. If you think about it, it really isn't a whole lot. Like five in three months, I need to do better. But I have to say that I really hate both of those. Um, they're the same brand. They are the Nature brand. This one is Red Wine. This one is White Sea. <sighs> I, I have talked about them before. I don't want to get into this rant one more time. But basically, the solution is too thick and the cloth is too thick. The cloth doesn't absorb the solution. And it's just a dry cloth on your face sitting there. Um, it doesn't really do anything so I'm just using them pretty much like a moisturizer so I would put it on my face and maybe just leave it on there like at most five minutes and take it off um, and I will rub in the rest of the solution and kind of use it as a overnight mask that way it does make my face feel pretty soft the next morning I think bottom line is that the solution inside is good but the cloth is a garbage I have two things for my makeup removal. So I have this uh, Neutrogena makeup remover uh, cleansing towelettes. I'm sure everyone knows about this. It's just a stable that I always go back to. Sometimes I know I would need something to travel with and I will go back to this. So I finished the pack, but actually my preferred removing method is cleansing oil. So this one is from Julep, it's called Love Your Bare Face. It's actually quite expensive. I think it's like $22 or $28 full price on the website. I don't think it's worth that price, but it is really good. It lasted me probably a month and a half to two months each time, um, but still it's just too expensive. This is really effective and like everything about it I love. I just don't love the price. When Julep has any deals and I try to grab this because I know I love this product. If I could get it anyhow cheaper, I always try to grab one. I don't have many face cleansing products to show you, not that I don't wash my face. <laughs> I always use a face cleanser after I use my um, remover oil type of product, but I used my Philosophy uh, Pure like halfway and I kind of put it aside and I'm using my other cleanser. It's almost done and I put it aside. I don't know, I, I have to fix that habit. Um, the only one I was able to finish is this exfoliator from Dr. Brandt. That's a pore dermabrasion um, exfoliator. I actually just realized the black one and the blue one, they're different. I always thought they were just the same thing and then they maybe changed the packaging. Now I feel like a fool because I never really paid attention to the difference and I never knew there was a difference. I think the product itself is good, but I don't like it because the exfoliants inside is just too small. Like it gets in my eye, I always feel I couldn't rinse it off. So I only use this in the shower and I only use it when I wash my hair. I feel that way I can really rinse my face, you know, with the running water all over the place and I wouldn't get paranoid with it. But I mean, it's a good product. I just, I couldn't get rid of my like psychological barrier. Get rid of, get over of get over of my barrier. If you don't know, I'm a big religious user of toners and I don't know, I think I started using toner when I was in high school. It's just something that I always have to have. If I don't have toners in my routine, I, I feel my skin just looks weird. Wow, that's really rainy now. And it's sunny, so it, it's weird. And it's like huge rain. 
Um, you know, I feel when it's sunny, the rain is usually kind of like mist-ish almost, but right now it's like heavy rain with a lot of sunshine. What you know? <laughs> Here, those are all my toners. I actually finished two full size and one like baby sample. This baby sample is from Pixie. It's glow tonic. I really like this one. I've been wanting to buy the full size. I don't know why I haven't. I have used quite a few of those samples now, and I do really enjoy it. I think it's really nice. It's hydrating, and it does a little bit more than any other like normal toner. The two full size here. One is from Dr. Brandt. This is Dual Fusion Water. It's probably just like a micellar water, I feel, because it says it could remove makeup as well. I feel it's a little bit stronger than a normal toner, but I don't really distinguish micellar water and toner anyways. I use them the same way. So, I mean, this is good if it has a little bit extra like makeup removal properties, so that way I can make sure all my makeup is removed. For the price, I probably wouldn't repurchase. I got it from Marshalls for pretty cheap. That was okay, but I wouldn't buy it full price. I don't think it did that much extra. And this one is a clearance from Marshalls. It's only $3.50. That's totally worth it. It's a witch hazel um, toner. I'm sure everyone knows about this. And it really, really works. It's so simple, so gentle, and it just calms my skin down if I have any breakouts. Sometimes you just need to go back to the simple, ordinary thing. And I feel that's, that's the thing. I only used up one sample size eye cream. This one is from Skin & Co. Um, it's, what is this called? Truffle Therapy Eye Concentrate. I don't like it. I really don't like it. This is like, the smell is really creamy. It feels like it's coconut and vanilla, but in a really bad way. And it's, the texture of it is really creamy. It doesn't get absorbed into your eyes. You, I feel I'm just rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and it's not going anywhere. Um, it doesn't really moisturize my eyes that much. I mean, it's just sitting on top of my skin. I'm really not a big fan. I'm glad I finished that. And I have three kind of like um, serum type product. Um, they're all sample size, actually two sample size and one foil pack. Um, this first one I really enjoyed. It's the Murad Rapid Age Spa and Pigment Lightening Serum. I feel this is so good. I love the scent of it. And and it absorbs really fast. I don't know if it really lightened my like um, pigment spots. I have a lot of hyperpigmentation from my uh, acne breakout before. I don't think it did that much um, in lightening them, but I do feel it really hydrated my skin and make my skin a little bit brighter. And this one I also enjoyed quite a bit. This is from Laneige and it's a water bank serum. This one is a little thicker. It's definitely just for the hydrating kind of property. Um, it definitely hydrates well, but it's not like enough that you can skip your moisturizer. It's I think good for dry skin in the winter. I used it in the spring. It's borderline a little bit too thick, but I did really like it regardless. The last one is Apollo's Choice Skin Perfecting 2% BHA Gel. I really, really like this, surprisingly. I think I would go buy the full size now. Like, when you first apply it, it feels very moisturizing and a little bit like, it's like a gel consistency. It feels like you really don't need moisturizer afterwards, but like maybe an hour after, my face definitely feels too dry. I definitely still need to follow up with a moisturizer. So I use this kind of like a, serum-y product, kind of just between toner and moisturizer, and I really enjoyed it. I think it did miracles for my skin. Very last two skin products, one is the Sample Size Laneige Water Bank Moisturizing Cream, Moisturizer Cream. I use this, of course, in combination with that serum. I enjoy this combination. I think this one is very similar to the Moisture Surge from Clinique, but maybe a little bit thicker. So it depends on what kind of consistency you like. This one is more creamy, uh, not so much like a gel, but I think they do pretty much the same thing. And I like the scent a lot. I think it's beautiful finish. Uh, it's not too thick underneath makeup either, like during the daytime. So I really enjoyed this. I think Laneige makes really good skincare items. The very, very last thing, I wasn't too sure if I should have included it, but I figured why not? Um, because I'm kind of decluttering it. This is Organic Skincare Doctor Bioactive Skincare Organic Death Dead Sea Mineral Mud Mask. Such a long name. 
Um, I used probably like two thirds of it. That's why I kind of feel justified including it in my empties, even though I'm throwing away the rest. I think it did good to my skin, but it did really bad for my drain. Like, <laughs> it would make my skin feel hydrated and clean afterwards, but uh, when you wash it off, they kind of like come off as chunks and I feel they kind of clogged my drain. So I stopped using it, not because I don't like the effect on my face, but because I don't like what it did to my drain. But also at the same time, it didn't do miracles for my face, so I don't feel like I really need to sacrifice my drain for it, if that makes sense. So I'm tossing the rest of it. I think I got my money's worth and I did what I could and at this point, it's just not worth it anymore. So I'm sure this is really long already. Right now it says it's being 32 minutes. I'm gonna try to add it and make it a little bit shorter, but I hope you guys enjoy this and let me know how you feel about me doing this seasonally versus monthly and I can divide things in categories. Maybe I should divide them even more, like only makeup as part one and only skincare as part two, you know? So it wouldn't be this long. Um, just any thoughts, let me know because I'm kind of confused about where to go with those empty videos. I hope you guys will give me some constructive suggestions. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Bye.